Hello folks, welcome back. I'm finally, for the most part, getting caught up. Or I'm the one, the only hobo Tom. And I don't know. I, I just had a, a weird week. Last week. Uh, this week I called in to work at the other location. Hey, they like my quality of work. What can I say? Work me eight days a week. Oh wait, there's only seven. I'm not here to talk about my working situation. I'm here to talk about some SmackDown. I finally have a chance. Um, all the pay-per-view, well, all the pay-per-views are done with. But I'll go more into that probably tomorrow when I do my Monday Night Raw review. Yeah, well, I'm tired. Let me see if I can stay awake for about 27 more minutes. So this is Mon So this is Friday Night SmackDown. Um, I don't know if we're going to go back to live streaming. Two hours of live streaming isn't too bad. It's just those Raws. Raw is such a slog to go through. So I might do that. That way I can finally get stuff done. Which is always good. Um, so we start off Monday SmackDown. Or Friday SmackDown. Jeez, I don't even know what day of the week it is. Horrible. Uh, we have Edge comes out, cuts a promo while Roman Reigns is there, or in the ring, the Usos are there. I think I started the show like five minutes late. I just started to cook pizza and take a shower, so yeah, five minutes of missing SmackDowns, especially the opening, nothing really happens. All I know is that we have Edge and the Mysterious taking on Roman Reigns and the Usos, which kind of led me to most of my predictions. Uh, the Usos, Jimmy, for the most part, starts starts by being beat up. Um, and then I couldn't believe Dominic had like a two a two rope moonsault. Getting close to that triple flip area of Sabu, which is great because I got to talk about Sabu today because I met Sabu once. I'm all in Pala Creek. It's so weird where you meet some pro wrestlers. Enough about that. And this time I know is Jimmy Uso. Because Jey Uso dyed his hair red. Obviously, someone knows. Someone in the WWE main office needs to know the difference. Wait, I need to know the difference. So yeah, tomorrow's Wednesday. Let me fix that on the board. Um, well, today is Wednesday. Yeah. So it's yeah. I'm behind. Yeah, uh, uh, Jay tags in. Gets to beat up Dominic a little bit. Roman <laughs> gets his turn. Um, Dominic at powerbomb on the table. Always a great spot, especially when the table doesn't collapse. Means it's made out of sturdy stuff. It's good. Has a little bit more impact. Like, like crashing tables should be one thing. The announce desk really should be made of something sturdier. Edge gets the hot tag eventually and just beats up everyone. Uh, Ray gets, uh, Ray gets up. Jay, uh, uh, Rey Mysterio takes out Jay Uso, and then eventually Ray gets taken out by Roman Reigns. So again, they kind of do like the cycle where where they get to beat up each other. There's a big splash on the outside by Edge onto Roman. Surprised he could still do that. That's always good to see. You still got it, uh, Jay. Got the roll up and the assist. So that was really cool to see. Again, I do like it when the twins do stuff together. And for some reason, I don't know if it was this, but I don't know. Something seemed lower though. Maybe it, maybe it's just me. So you never know. Um, so again, this was a good match. It's good solid. Good opening match, good solid match. Sets the tone for the whole show. Again, going into the pay per view as a go home show. This was actually a good match. Solid cheeseburger match. And then eventually Roman Reigns super punches. Um, Edge beats up people in the backstage. There's an Edge interview that's interrupted by Seth Rollins. We'll see that play out. Well, more so, well, probably more so at the pay-per-view. 
try and talk like I don't know what happened. And I forget what happened at the end. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yep. So, again, a little hint of what, what's going to happen, too, at the end of the show. Uh, it was Sami Zayn came out. He, he says, I'm going to hold the show. Finn Balor, a real rock and roller, comes out, which is always good to see. Beats up Sami Zayn. Um, Paul Cruz comes out, does a promo. Then we have Shotzi Blackheart. And... Maya Jack, um, uh, uh, Tamina, no, Shassi Blackheart and Tegan Knox take on Natalia and Tamina. Tamina goes right after Shotzi. Shotzi is tall. I didn't realize, that, like, height-wise. Maybe it's because I'm so used to seeing her in NXT. I always thought she was short. She's probably average woman height. 5'6", something like that. Candice Ray's tiny. Um, I know Zia Lee... Zylie's so built. But yeah, but she's hot. But short still. Karen Q's kind of somewhat short. Let's see here. Any black was tall as anything, though. Lana Lane's short. But yeah. You know what? I guess if you're short and around, sh and around short people, you still seem kind of short. But when you go in there and you're like, oh, you're, you're, you look like a normal head against Tamina. Tamina, I think, is a little on the tall side. 5'10", maybe? Natalia's 5'8"-ish? I mean, nothing outrageous. Normal height, though. I just never realized that until this match. And then I didn't realize how short Tegan Knox was, either. A little weird. And then uh, Liv Morgan and Selena Vega were ringside, and all they did was bicker, and... I'll be honest, this kind of did take away from the match a little bit, because then they would, like, go away from the action and then just go watch the two of them bicker. Uh, let's see here. Shotzi tried to roll up Natalia. That wasn't going to happen. Uh, Shotzi. There's a near super kick party. Uh, Tegan Knotts did get beat up a lot, though. Or, oh, I'm sorry, Shotzi Blackheart got then beat up. Uh, Tegan Knotts got the hot hot tag, the cannonball. Hits the shining wizard on, on Tamina. Uh, but Natalia got uh, put Tegan into, I believe, Tegan into the sharpshooter. But then was like distracted because then Liv Morgan and Selena Vega started to, to fight outside the ring, and this led to a distraction roll up. Uh, Tegan Knox and Shotzi Blackheart won for a second time in a row. I don't think they'll do it a third time. I think they're good. They're a good filler tag team until something happens. So we'll see. And then Natalia and Tamina decided to beat up Liv Morgan and Zelina Vega. Uh, Liv Morgan comes out on top. Liv Morgan's not winning money in the back. So yeah, that match yeah, it was a just it was a, it was okay. Ham sandwich of a match. I mean, Carmella starts walking through the stage and she passes um, the, the Rude Dogs, Dolph Ziggler and Robert Rude. The only thing I remember from this is that Robert Rude shouted, Hey, 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 do you have a sister? Whoa. Yeah, that's old school. And then it was set up to be Carmella versus Bianca Belair. And this was the, the woman's championship belt. Um, I thought it was funny. I think there was a sign that said, Carmella wins, we riot. That's right. Good old fashioned sign there. Um, the way the women do the body slam, I'll tell you what. I wish I could grab Carmella there too. It's probably a terrible thing to say, but it's the truth. And I give you, my YouTube audience, nothing but the straight truth. Right down the middle. It's like Bill Alfonso used to say. Uh, first part of the match was a shove fest. Um, slap. Uh, there was a Wil Wilbur snapmare. That was actually pretty cool looking. Uh, Bianca takes, uh, starts to deliver big shoulders in the corner. It's Carmella. 
Carmella uses the hair to drive Bianca Belair into the post. That was that was pretty good. Um, Carmella just looks like fifty year old Mill Florida mom. I'm so sorry, Carmella. You've been in Florida too long. It's it's just sun damaged. Probably everything about you. Although I still hope there's tread left on those tires. Oh, yes, I did say that. Um, and there was, it was so funny. I think Carmella got a wedgie on the top rope. That was kind of funny to see. Yeah, it's the old, the old adage. Um, she had fifty dollars over seventy-five dollar bottoms, pulled up where the sun doesn't shine. That was great. Again, Carmella's been ruined by the sun. Uh, Carmella did hit a super rana. Always impressive to see that. Then there was a like a little setup for the gory, gory brawl. And then I think this was the. Um, yeah, Bianca Belair was going for the gory bomb. And I think, like, like literally just grabs the cooch straight up of Carmella. That has to be awkward. I'm trying to think. When I wrestled, maybe my forearm or elbow went up there. But, like, we were taught to, like, always reach up and, like, try and grab the small of the back or the back of the trunks. And then you hold them, hold them up, and you turn. And then this way, you can pull the head in while you kind of push outwards. And my camera just froze up, so this video is gonna be funky. Yeah, that's like the old, that's like the safe way to do it, because that way you're not dropping anyone in the head. Even if you over rotate them, like worse comes to worse, like they fall on their feet and their ass a little too hard instead of flat, but that's okay. Yeah, she is like straight, straight grab cooch. N nothing played about that. Camilla um, turned a guillotine attempt into a suplex. That was good to see. Uh, Camilla then didn't drag Bianca by the hair. However, Bianca Belair hit eventually hit the kiss of death, a KOD. Bianca Belair, er, er, uh, Bel Bel Bianca Belair wins, and this is why I only do one take. Retained your belt. That was a cheeseburger match. Then we had an Alpha Academy promo. Um, Cesaro comes out for that. Then we had our next match, Otis versus Cesaro. I'm like, wait a second. This is getting late and we still have a four-man tag match. Or a, a four-man, a fatal four-way. So it was, it was weird. Again... I do like the fact that they're trying to fit more wrestling in, which is good. Especially considering last week they only had, I think, three matches over the course of two hours. So now if they have five, I guess everything averages out, so that's pretty good. Uh, Otis versus Cesaro. Uh, the clubbing bows by Otis. Cesaro started a combination, his combination, his own combination, that big European uppercut. Uh, Otis posted himself, and then all of a sudden Chad Gable came in for the DQ loss but the dust is finished baby it barely got started they said we're running we said we're running out of time boys and girls dq death to finish a kenneth soup match uh when roman reigns in the locker room paul Heyman was interviewed that paul Heyman is always so good and then outside Biggie, Paulie, don't you dare be sour. Clap for your soon-to-be Money in the Bank champion and feel the power. Oh, it's so, Biggie is such great personality, though. Especially with Paulie dangerously and the facials that Paulie has. Just a look of like pure shock and annoyance at the same time. Because then we had our main event. It was Big E versus Shinsuke Nakamura versus Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins. This was actually fun. Um, Big E got a pretty big entrance. Uh, Eric Bugenhausen. Bugenhausen. Had a great entrance. Did a great entrance for Shinsuke Nakamura. That's great that, that Shinsuke has his own, own play man, I guess. Um. 
Kevin Owens just came in, kind of just kind of looked annoyed. But that's okay. That's Kevin Owens. And Seth Rollins, I do like Seth Rollins' new theme. I do miss the burnt down. I still have aspects of his architect da -da 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 stuff. But yeah. Match starts off. Um, they kind of like. They're. they're I don't, it was weird because they just start brawling. They all go to the outside. And then, like, they, they pair off in the ring every so often. This has become formulaic where they kind of break it. Instead of being like a true four person match, they break it down into segments where it's a typical one versus one match. It's okay, but the thing is they, they keep on redoing the same script all over again. Uh, eventually, uh, there was some double teaming. Um, yeah, uh, Big E, uh, Shinsuke Nakamura, and K got on the same page. They just wanted to beat up Seth. Just beat up Seth Rollins. There was a double suplex there. Seth Rollins eventually did a splash, but no one was home. That was great. Um, so it was uh, Rollins and Shins Shinsuke... They actually worked together a little bit to take on Big E. Again, kind of makes sense. Then, of course, Shins of course Seth Rollins turns on Shinsuke. You know, Shinsuke Nakamura versus Kevin Owens. This is what I want to see. This is like an NXT quality match. Shinsuke Nakamura versus Kevin Owens. WWE, make it happen. That would be great. King Owens. Lord Kevin Owens. That sounds pretty good, too. Uh, Big E eventually hits the big finish over Seth. Gets Big E out of the ring. Um, he did something to Shinsuke Nakamura. He, he turned on Shinsuke Nakamura. Then though it's kind of like the typical, like, yeah, we're each going to hit our big moves. Uh, Kevin Owens... Was was like looked like he, he was hurt a little bit. Seth Rollins hit the stomp. Seth Rollins won, which means Seth Rollins is not winning Money in the Bank. Overall, it just seems short, but still, with, with, with that kind of talent in the ring, that is a cheeseburger match. And wow, with everything that's gone wrong. This was a fairly quick show. Again, a fairly entertaining cheeseburger show. Well, a couple news and notes. Um, I am behind. I will be getting up my raw video. Jeez, I hope by Wednesday. If not Thursday, like Thursday morning-ish. The latest. Um, AEW will be done sometime Thursday. NXT, I'm live streaming because that's fun to do. Thursday, I can't do anything because I have to work that night and close that night. I don't think I can really catch Impact highlights. So it's hard to see what I miss. And then closing's weird. Friday, I will be back live stream for uh, Red Wine and Pizza Friday Night Smackdowns. Then I get a weekend to relax. I'm going fishing, folks. So on that, folks... I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Go fishing in Florida. Bye.